Welcome to the Stuart Major Beam Engine Rebuild. This is part 31 and it's mounting the pedestal bearing, which is entirely unlike what I was doing last week, making a comedy video with a friend of mine, all about a lady who turned out to be a man. But that's another story. I make these slightly insane videos with this very good friend of mine from time to time, but now, alas, it's back to reality. It's time to thread the top of the pedestal. I'm tapping the holes to take the studs which will hold the outer main bearing in place. Whenever you're manually tapping a hole in a piece of metal, it's a case of two turns inwards and one turn outwards. If you don't do that and just power into the hole, you do stand a chance of getting the tap stuck and then it will snap off and that is not good. If you don't have much experience with taps, what I recommend you do is make a jig and it's just a little piece of bar turned in the lathe with a hole drilled down the middle which will allow the tap to pass through and that will keep the tap perfectly square with the hole. If you go into a hole like this at an angle, you're also likely to snap off the tap. Anyway, I've been doing this for a long time so I don't really need to do that and everything's okay. So once the hole is tapped, I then turn the pedestal upside down and, pardon the pun, I tap the pedestal on the bench to clear all the swarf out of the hole. So now I have a pedestal with holes drilled in the bottom to mount to the mounting base and two threaded holes at the top. The top holes of course don't go all the way through. So what I need to do now is to make a couple of studs. I could either buy a long length of studding, which is quite expensive, or just machine down a couple of bolts. So I chose the latter option because it's cheaper and quicker. It's over to the lathe just to remove the head of the bolt. This steel is particularly hard stuff and it's quite difficult to cut through. But my little old Boxford seems to make short work of it. This old Boxford lathe is quite powerful and with the right cutting tool would actually remove a lot more metal but it would put a lot of strain on the machine. As I said earlier, this stuff is really hard so I'm removing the metal quite slowly. And for those of you who like machining, here is some machining. I really do get quite a diverse cross-section of comments on my videos from viewers. A lot of viewers complain that there isn't enough machining in the videos, but I can only actually machine when I need to machine. I don't get up in the middle of the night and nip into the workshop to do any machining. It just has to be done when it has to be done. And on this job, most of the machining's already been done. I often wonder, you know, if famous filmmakers get the same problem. I wonder if anybody ever said to Stanley Kubrick, uh, well, Stanley, we really enjoyed your film Clockwork Orange, but we felt that there was not enough machining and general lathe work in it. Maybe that's why he withdrew the film in the first place. What did make me smile, though, was a comment that someone put on my video, The Ballad of Sweet Annabella, and the comment said, Hmm, not much machining in this either. So obviously, the man who wrote this comment had a good sense of humour, albeit a little strange. My sense of humour can be a little strange also, and I'm now considerably worried because in the papers this week, and on the internet, I've been reading about the fact that some scientists are saying that if you have a really weird, odd, warped sense of humour, then you're more likely to get early onset of dementia. Well, I don't know about that. I don't think I can really agree with that. I'm sure it must be right in some cases. But my sense of humour has always been a bit strange. And I'm quite old now, and I don't think... Um, Oh dear, I've forgotten what I'm saying. Oh yes, I remember now, I know where I am now. I'm in my workshop and I'm machining studs. I'm reducing the heads of these bolts to make them into studs, as if by magic. As I said earlier, make sure you take off a very small amount of metal at one cut, otherwise you're likely to break the tool. This stuff is very hard. I would guess that these bolts have been heat treated in the process of manufacture, but they're not that hard that you can't cut them. Some bolts are really incredibly hard and you need lots of coolant and a very sharp tool to cut them. These are cutting okay, really. The good thing, of course, is once the bolt's head has been machined off, the stud will still be hard, so it will be a very good stud to hold the parts together. And here we have the finished pedestal with its studs fitted. And this is the top bearing going onto the studs. And those of you who are following this should now notice that the top cap is on the wrong way round and the main bearing itself is not machined equally at both ends. I will do something about that, but not for the moment. I need to carry on with the video. What I'm doing here is clamping down the crankshaft in the bearings. I need the crankshaft to be in its finished position here. 
So the first thing I do is tighten the main bearing on the bed plate and this will hold the crankshaft in its proper position. Then I slide the pedestal bearing onto the crankshaft and then also tighten the top cap on that bearing to hold it in position. And then I notice that the pedestal has been lifted off the baseboard and this is a general idea and if my measurements are correct this should be one eighth of an inch and these are temporary one eighth of an inch pieces of mahogany underneath the pedestal. I will probably change these packings for a piece of steel later on to give the pedestal a larger footprint on the base. After slackening off the top caps and giving them a bit of lubrication, I can spin the flywheel to see how concentrically it's running. I have of course just gently pinched at one of the grub screws. The whole crankshaft is oscillating from side to side, that will be put right when I put the packing pieces in, but the flywheel is going to spin quite true. If you take another look at video number one of the series, you'll see how wobbly the flywheel was originally, but it's okay now. I've mentioned in previous episodes that the hole in the flywheel is slightly larger than the crankshaft. The hole in the pulley is perfect, it's an absolutely perfect fit, and it's running extremely true, but the flywheel is still wobbling very, very slightly. But I must say at this stage, I've only gently nipped at one of the grub screws, not both of them. Because there are two grub screws opposite each other, it allows for some adjustment. What I intend to do is give the inside surface of the centre hole of the flywheel a slight coat of paint. This will help it centre on the crankshaft. Then all I have to do is nip up the grub screws from each side to perfectly align it, and it should spin very well indeed. It's not bad now, and it's a lot better than it was before I took it all apart. So here we have it, it's starting to look like a beam engine again. In the next episode it's time to fix certain things permanently in place and assemble the Watts parallel motion. That's it for now, it's time for my electric shock therapy and I hope you found it useful and thanks for watching. Oh, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Oh dear, maybe that news article I read on the internet was correct after all.